What's up everybody, Jake Farmer again here with uh, Singular Agronomics. Uh, out front some dry humate today. Just wanted to do a video on the three main kind of tips and tricks, lessons learned that I've kind of learned over spreading dry humate in the past. Um, and then at the end, I'm gonna cover probably the most asked question I get in regards to dry humate, so stay tuned. All right, so the first kind of lesson that we've learned or the tip that we've found that in is check your soil types or refer to your soil tests when planning a dry humate application because what we've seen is sometimes the poorer spots in your field is what responds better to the humate application. Vice versa to that is your better producing spots in a field. Usually their, you know, their carbon levels or their organic matter levels are already in pretty good shape. So as you're planning out a field even if you have to manually change the rate, kind of take a variable rate approach to it. You know, where your better producing spots or your high organic matter spots in your field don't need near as much humate as maybe your sandier spots or your lower producing spots. So keep that in mind the next time you're putting some humate on. All right, so second tip or lesson that I've kind of learned, and it's more not that I've learned personally just from talking with people is how rates can be affected by different application types. You know, are you putting it on through a broadcast spreader every few years? Are you putting it through a dry strip till rig as a maintenance every single year with your other fertility program? Um, and in regards to that, if you're, you know, you're running it through, you're getting it in the ground, whether it be a box drill or a strip till rig, in that regards, you can usually bring your rates down away, especially when you're you're talking about yearly applications. If you're throwing it on top, and in regards to like a broadcast spreader, and you're doing it every few years, that's where your rates can start to rise, and you can get more out of it by putting more on. Okay, so my uh, third and final kind of tip for, or lesson would be just in the timing of application. Um, it's been kind of proven that putting it on in the fall or early winter months, you're gonna get your best bang for buck. This stuff does take some time to break down and work into your soil. And you wanna see, you do wanna see the benefit out of it in that first year. Now, you know, guys that are spreading the application out over a few years or whatnot, you know, it comes down to the point of getting it on when you can, barring weather conditions. Um, another, you know, talking weather conditions is wind, just like with a broadcast spreader like I'm using now. Like any other dry fertilizer, you don't want to be out there when the wind's blowing 40, 50 mile an hour. Um, you want to get this humate down in the spread pattern where you intend to put it. And then one thing we did learn last year is it can get too cold to put this on. When it starts dropping down around zero or below, the, the moisture content of dry humate runs anywhere from 30 to 35%. And um, if it gets too cold, you can have some bridging, some freezing up of the product, and then it's just not gonna spread very well, so. All right, and so now the number one question that a lot of us get when it comes to regards to dry humate is, can I mix dry humate with dry urea, 4600? And the short answer is that, no, you probably should not. And the reason is, is that they react together, they'll gel up uh, the high nitrogen content. Same goes for dry AMS on that side of things is, I get it, you guys are trying to save applications and that, but you're gonna have a mess on your hands in that case. now. In regards to mixing, your maps, your daps, your mezes, stuff like that, good to go. Mix away, and yeah, I'm rambling now, but have fun. Guys, thanks for watching the content so far. We've got a whole lot more on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube. Subscribe there. We put a ton of content on there that's, that's useful and have applicable information to help on your farms and day-to-day -day life. So go ahead, hop over there. If you want more information, check us out there.